something beautiful hand crafts and this is an unboxing video i don't usually make unboxing videos because i really don't know why people make unboxing videos but they do and people seem to enjoy them and so i guess here i am and this is josefina uh, i think it is anyway i've got the other two more coming kirsten and molly so I'm assuming this one is Josefina. Nicely packaged. Shipped really well. Got it for a really good price on eBay. The seller said she was in excellent condition. And we shall see. So far, um, I've been pretty much getting deals on dolls that aren't in the best condition so that I can fix them up. So hearing that she was in good condition was nice. I don't really worry about clothes because the whole point of me getting these dolls is to make historically accurate clothing. So I'm not really into whatever their meat outfit was or whatever. When Kit came, I took her meat outfit off and put it away. So Kit obviously is historically accurate in her meat outfit, but it wasn't what I wanted. Okay, so here she is. Not my favorite packaging. She's kind of folded up, but she's okay. Okay, so here's Josefina. Okay, so let's check out the limbs. For the most part, that's nice and stiff arms nice and stiff. This body is very clean. Looks like they try to get a spot out of there, which is okay. Here she's from the back. Pleasant company. She doesn't have super flat strings. They're okay strings. Um, I can tell from the way her wig is back here that she isn't a little of an earlier doll because the earlier ones, like some the Samantha doll, you can see a bit of their wig ribbon back here so that's not messed up that is uh pretty much the way that she was made and looking at her hair length i'll show you that it looks like she's got the right length hair now i'm gonna put a little water on this and comb it out i just have some suggestions for people selling dolls on ebay like i know not everyone has like super duper time. Uh, you know what? And it just might be that these particular people don't really care. They just want the doll sold and out of the way. But if you are selling dolls on eBay and you want to get a better price, if you care to get a better price, like I said, if you don't care, then hey, if you care to get a better price, first of all, you might want to see if you can identify the doll, correctly identify the doll. Uh, Felicity was not correctly identified. So I got a better price for her than I would have if she had been marked as Felicity. Uh, well, there's nothing you can do about Kit. She was accurately described and she looked good in the picture. Both Samantha, Addie, and Josefina looked a hot mess in their pictures. And all anyone really had to do is just to comb the hair. You know, like, it just did a little combing on the hair and present her combed. You could have got a better price for her. The two dolls on the way, the Kirsten and the Molly doll, oh, they looked a hot mess in their photos, too. And they could have gotten higher prices for them if... They had kind of done that. That would have worked. And I kind of talked the Kirsten doll down because she was a hot mess. I could tell that her hair length was all there properly. So I did not, um, it didn't concern me about getting her, even though she did look like it was kind of mad. And that's nothing I can't fix. But if anybody was looking for a doll for any other reason, they would go for the doll that looks the best. So just a, a little combing. Could have got another $10, $15 for the dolls. All right, so anyway, 
here she is out of the box. She looks great. And there'll be more on her soon. This is just a really short video on me unboxing and my wonderful eBay find. Because look how clean she is. So she was nicely taken care of doll. Okay, I'm still waiting for Molly and for Kirsten. And everybody will get their own video so far. I've just done Kitten Addie. Then we'll get these guys dressed. So I guess I'm making another slip for today. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Hello everyone, this is Denise at Something Beautiful Hand Crafts. And I was in the middle of putting together Felicity's dress when Josefina showed up. Now, um, I ordered from eBay or one on the auction, a pleasant company, Josefina, about two or three weeks back. And my niece wanted an American Girl doll, so I figured I would find something for her on eBay and came across another Josefina and won her in the auction too. Now, when I first, you know, won the auction, well, when I was watching the auction, I didn't really pay attention to what kind of Josefina she was. I'm just interested in getting a really nice doll for her. And uh, it was only after I'd already bid that I realized that she had a tag on her body. And that she was more than likely a Mattel Josefina. Which, in the case of my niece, doesn't actually matter. For me, it was kind of important to find a Pleasant Company doll. But not really for her. Now, how do you tell the Pleasant Company Josefina from the Mattel Josefina? I've been scouring American Girl sites for weeks as I was searching for these dolls. What I was told, not sure how accurate this is, is that because Josefina was the last of the six original historical dolls, and she came when Mattel and Pleasant Company, well, when Mattel was taking over Pleasant Company, that she is the last of the historical dolls that could be Pleasant Company. So it's the, the six. Uh, Felicity, Samantha, Molly, Addie, uh, who am I missing? Josefina, and Kirsten. Okay, not necessarily in that order. And it also said that most of the Josefina that you would find would be Mattel since she was at that tail end. And as it turns out, of course, I had a Pleasant Company one. The number one reason I know that she's Pleasant Company is not the neck stamp on the back, but it's the vinyl. When I squeeze her legs, okay, you can see that the vinyl is soft. So I know that she is an original Pleasant Company doll, as are the other five American girls I have. Um, counting the number... 20 just like you and I think I also said not just the six historical but numbers one through 20 for the just like you dolls are also pleasant company dolls when you try to squeeze this vinyl it doesn't squeeze it's hard kit is a hard vinyl doll because she's a historical doll that came after the Mattel switch and although she has pleasant company the back of her neck because she was still in that pleasant company mold um, she's still the heart body doll. This doll has American girl on the back of her neck. What are the other differences? Okay. So this should be pretty apparent immediately. If I can get her to come up. Okay. She's like stuck in her hair. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it's immediately apparent that the number one difference is skin tone. I don't really want to say one is lighter or darker than the other. That doesn't seem to be what's going on. What's going on is their undertones are different. And I'm sorry, I don't know anything about beauty or cosmetics to be able to call the undertones. I would just say she has more like a peachy undertone and she is more of a neutral tannish undertone okay you can also see that in the color of their bodies 
okay, because the color of the body is reflective of the color of the skin tone. So that's a big difference right there. Also, let me turn her head so you can see it. She has a, a more narrow head. This one is more rounded, much more rounded, prominent cheeks than this Josefina does. And she also seems like she's got a smaller nose than the other Josefina. Her lip color is also uh, slightly different. Of course, it, it goes with her skin tones, basically. Now, on the arms, it's kind of apparent, but the legs, let me see if I can get that in the shot. The legs are really obvious. Look at the thickness in the legs between the two dolls. So when it's said that the Pleasant Company dolls are bigger, they're usually a little wider. You can see it in their bodies across the shoulder. doesn't seem like much, but it's about a quarter inch, and it really changes the way clothing fits. So that isn't a consideration. Also, of course, um, this Josefina has a tag, and that one does not. It's not been removed. She just doesn't have one. And that is pretty typical of the Pleasant Company dolls. Now, if you turn on the back with Felicity's pattern stuck to her. Clear the tables, people, before you take the videos. All right, now, you can see right here, you can't really see a Pleasant Company stamp. But like I said, that's not necessarily what's important in this case. Because there are transition dolls that have Pleasant Company stamps. Anyway, we see her strings and we see the seam for the back of her neck just straight across. And on this American Girl doll, the seam has that kind of V-like seam. So pretty much that's the difference between the Pleasant Company and the Mattel Josefinas. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and scrub this girl up and get her ready and dressed to see my niece. She did come. She came with her meat skirt. Now, I haven't really been focused on buying the dolls with their outfits. I could have paid a little more money for some of them and gotten parts or hold of their meat outfit, but that's not actually important to me. It's not why I have them. And the chances of me selling them again and needing that extra edit value is very slim. So it wasn't important. But in this case, um, I am going to keep this. I'm not giving this to my niece. I gave her all of the other clothing that came with the other dolls that was not historic or part of their meat outfits. It was only Kit who came with part of her meat outfit. So I kept that. But I'm going to keep that skirt because it is historic for Josefina. And I'm going to dress her in something different and send her on her way. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. hope this makes some kind of sense and gives you a little look at uh, Josefina. Have a great day.